The word Siddhi in Sanskrit means perfection or attainment. Another way of describing the word Siddhi is the soul's natural gifts and expressions once awakening takes place. And I'm going to be discussing the Siddhis and the way they are activated after a shift of consciousness or awakening in today's episode of Talking True. So welcome. My name is Julie Hoyle. Here on this channel, I interview mystics, near-death experiencers, uh, people who've had shifts of consciousness and radical awakenings or subtle awakenings, healers, and anyone who is interested in expanding their consciousness or the idea and the recognition of who they are. And I'm delighted today to have Dan Lexo joining me yet again. He's been on the show before and what he had to say was really profound. So I'm looking forward to diving into the subject of Siddhis. Dan is an author. He has his own YouTube channel here on YouTube, uh, which is titled Consciousness in Motion. And he has a great deal to say and to share. So Dan, welcome. It's great to have you with me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you again. Yeah. So shall we just dive right into Siddhis and maybe let's start with how yeah. the Siddhis manifested for you after oh. your opening. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, um, the Siddhis, they are, or in our modern, modern language, I would call them um, like powers, supernatural powers, although they are actually not supernatural. I think everybody has them or can have them. And um, my teacher said, everybody who seriously practices yoga gets them. But I think it's not just yoga. It's any type of spiritual discipline or any type of discipline that we can do. We eventually will develop develop cities and um i i recently i visited a friend in uh in mexico and he told me about a shaman who can materialize quartz just quartz crystals come out of his <laughs> hand and then i was asking my friend but what does it have any does it do anything any other impl implication and he said well it helps people to believe that things like this can be true, that they exist. In my case, I don't know. I might have had them like a few or something like since birth. And then um, during, you know, growing up and then starting seriously to practice spirituality, it kind of, um, I realized them in that sense, because in the beginning, I, I could not believe that this is true. When I met my teacher, he showed me, <laughs> but not showing me in the way, hey, look, boy, this is uh, this is how I read the minds, or this is telepathy, or this is how I can tell you the future and the past. Um, he just, uh, in a very uh, natural, unspoken way, uh, showed me that this is true. And uh, so I came to believe more in, in these abilities. And still, um, this has no end. I'm far from perfect, but, you know, a few things are there um, and they they develop and they become, yeah, how should I put it, more stable and um, I become more aware of them. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There, yeah. there are a lot. Um, there are a lot of these. Uh, so Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras, he describes like eight, you probably know, eight eight main cities and um, eight minor cities. But there are more. <laughs> there, there are even more than that. So the, 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 ma the major cities are like making oneself uh, like really light or really heavy or really big or really small like an atom or... Um, like uh, teleportation, uh, complete like mind reading, 
um, in the sense of seeing everything. And it's it gets like more and more differentiated and, and smaller or bigger uh, healing, um, all that. Um, you know, there, there's a, a range of, <laughs> I, I cannot remember, remember them all, but I guess, like I said, all of us, we have them either by birth or they develop during our lifetime. Um, and some people, they, they suppress them like after, you know, when, when they're still young because it's not good to see ghosts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So, you know, all of that said, I, I'm glad you brought up the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali because um, I studied those, but that was after I had had these siddhis coming alive within me. And in fact, what happened is <clears throat> I recognized from when, when I was very, very young, I was maybe five or six years old, that I, I would notice that when I would lie, um, particularly on my left side at night as I was falling asleep, my awareness and my sense of who I am, my, my physical body kind of like expanded, but it wasn't really my physical body. I thought it was, but it was the, my conscious awareness expanded and the sense of who I was grew to such an extent that it went beyond the walls of the room mm -hmm. and the place in which, you know, the home in which I was living. And it went really, it started to kind of go further and further and further and further out. And then at a certain point, I, you know, I'd have a bit of fear because I didn't know what this was. And then I kind of like come back into my body or into awareness. So that happened. And then the other thing that happened is um, again, when I was about to fall asleep and again, I'm often on my left side, I'd feel myself shrinking and becoming as small as a sesame seed, absolutely tiny, the tiniest, tiniest kind of atom. And um, and so these two things were with me from when I was very, very young. And of course, I, you know, I didn't ever speak to anybody about it because I didn't know what it was, but it was so natural to me and it felt very comfortable and authentic and real. And I knew that it was the truth of who I was and I was experiencing these kind of different qualities of what that was about. And then things like, you know, clairvoyance, clairaudience and all of those things, um, being able to perceive what people were thinking and feeling and, you know, having a deep knowing about what was going on with them even before they spoke or when they, you know, would put on a sort of pretense of everything being okay, I knew it wasn't. I could see it and hear it and feel it and perceive what was happening. So all of these gifts were always there. And then after um, I had a radical you know, Shaktipat Kundalini awakening, then these gifts just kind of blew up <laughs> and blew out, so to speak. So it was, it was very helpful for me to study uh, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras because everything that I'd experienced was there in detail you know, and, um, or it had experienced via some of the great beings that used to come in dreams and give me messages mm -hmm. and so on. Because, well, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things is kind of teleportation or being in two places at the same time and all of that. And um, I had a direct experience of, of, of what that looked like via these great beings that um, I've worked with. But, you know, one of the things that I would say, and I'm sure you've mm -hmm. heard the same, is in the Siddha tradition and in the tradition of Kashmir Shaivism, mm -hmm. um, you know, seekers are told, yogi adepts are told not to do the practices with the goal mm -hmm. of developing the Siddhas because the Siddhas are not the goal. The yeah. Siddhas are kind of an expression or a manifestation of what's happening within one's being, but you shouldn't make... Um, Kind of a kind of a big play of this and a big drama of this and go around telling everybody about what's been what's going on or make that your kind of primary focus. And I do remember one story about um, Swami Muktananda, who um, whose guru was Bhagavan Nichinanda, who's my who is my seed guru, and uh, Muktananda made this mistake of talking to somebody about one of the siddhis that had manifested and then apparently Bhagavan Nityananda chased him with a stick and beat him <laughs> really hard because he said that, um, you know, this isn't the goal. There's, there's much, 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 much more than the siddhis. The siddhis are kind of, uh, I guess, signposts 
and mm -hmm. they are said to dance in attendance at the feet of great beings. And great beings will utilize them, but they do not utilize them in an egoic way. It's just the manifestation, you know, via what they say or how they behave or, you mm. know, whatever's mm. happening. So I'm sure your teacher said that too. Yes, he never actually he never talked about them. <laughs> That's um, just just very very briefly. He mentioned that uh, these powers really exist, and but he never went in detail because I guess he wanted to keep people from exactly that. Um, yeah, the the teachers they refrain from. Um, well, they say that we have to pay caution not to get caught in them, but. Like when you have a straight head and you are on a, you are really are serious in your in your path, then um, the danger, I guess, is not so much there. It's just it is an ego. It it can become an ego thing, an egoic thing. Like when you start to to know something or whatever, or develop some other kind of of city, and then like praise yourself and go around uh, screaming it to to the public. That, that's not the sense of it. But I recently found out what the sense, the deeper sense actually is. They they come, they do come, but they come to assist the seeker, to yes. help you, actually. Yeah. They come to help you to, when you have a premonition of something, so that you can adjust on your way and you can react or be of service uh, to to anybody, to your family, to, to other people, um, as much as you can when, you know, um, not in the way that, hey, I'm going to do this, that now, uh, but um, it, it kind of, like like you said, it, it feels actually, it's really natural. It's not something outside of this world. It's actually from, from this world. <laughs> yes. um, and this is the barrier, but, but we live in times, what I wanted to say is that we live in times um, where all of this information now rises to the, uh, to the surface and it's good for people. It's 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 not so good to to talk too much about it, but it's good to have awareness about it, um, and to to make people aware that yes, they do exist, and what you feel and what you see or hear or whatever else it is, it is true. It's it's not it's not a dream, or it's not just your imagination. It really is true because there's a re sometimes a really fine line. Um, Sometimes I don't know if I'm just imagining this or if it is real, <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and more and more I get used to, um, there, there is a slight difference that happens in, in, in awareness. But um, in, in the beginning stages, I, I did not know, is my teacher now really talking to me in my head? I'm in my room and he's like 20 kilometers away. Are we having a conversation in my head or am I imagining this? And then later he proved that this conversation was real. So, yes. yeah, they are they are here to assist. Um, yeah, seeker on the way and everybody surrounding them as much as possible. Yes, and you know, on that note, let me just share something that happened recently, hmm. uh, which I think might be of value to to viewers uh, with respect to how this kind of manifests. So, um, a couple of weeks ago. I was on YouTube, I just finished, you know, with um, uploading a video, and then I got notification of something that had been posted by um, a man whose name is Brent Spirit, and he has a YouTube channel here <clears throat> on YouTube. And, um, you know, I just clicked, and when I went to look at his channel, he speaks about the Kundalini. And as I was listening and watching, I got this message, um, the message, a message from Bhagavan Nityananda, who's he's a great being who gave me Shaktipat in a lucid dream. And the message was reach out to Brent to see to invite him on the show. So I didn't miss a beat. You know, whenever I get a download like that or a message like that, however it comes, I always act. I or even if I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So anyway, I reached out and sent this email to him, invited him on the show. And then before we started to do the recording, he told me that he had recently started reading a book called The Sacred Power. And in this book, there was a photograph of Bhagavan Nityananda, and he was sitting staring at the photograph. And this was the night before 
um, I'd reached out with him. And this is the first time he, he didn't, didn't know anything about Bhagavan Nityananda. Mm-hmm. And um, and then the next day he received the email from me. So these things kind of weave together. And I've often said, you know, what happens is with respect to the people I invite onto the show, it's always it's always a nudge from one of the great beings, you know, invite this person, invite that person. And um, this is how we have these conversations. It's not, you know, Julie Hoyle, the story of Julie Hoyle sitting down trying to sort of figure everything out and plan it and manage it because <laughs> I, I really you know, wouldn't have a clue. Um, and, and that's the way it works. Yeah. That's it, the way it works. It does. It's, it does it's, it's mysterious. It's very mysterious the way it all sort of comes together. And um, we're prodded to do things we wouldn't normally do. You know, and all the, in, with respect to the expression of what's happened in my sort of story or journey or expression of the awakening, whatever you want to call it, I've written books and I've created a website and I've done all kinds of things I would never have dreamed of doing um, yeah. prior to that. And it's done, it isn't done as, a gra- as an aggrandizement of the story mm. of Julie Hoyle. It's about, honoring the place from which this awakening is given and arises from source itself or the stream itself of life, however you want to term it. And it's about trusting that place and honoring that place and and wanting to share that too for those people who are, you know, going through their own shift of consciousness or self-recognition and, um, you know, providing some sort of community. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautifully said. Yeah, it's it's similar with me. I I never thought I would write something. <laughs> I always wanted, but well, uh, and this ha- this happened, and um, I was able to actually to help a lot of people with health. So uh, develop these 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 healing um, yeah modalities, energies, powers, and um, one of, one of them is helping people align this the spine and the hips so when we are out m- most of us actually i've noticed except of the the indigenous people that have a deeper connection to to nature we are our spine is not straight and our hips are misaligned so the spine starts to compensate so what would i what I can provide for people is to to align that so the hips are straight again and the spine is straight and people can check that at home when you sit down and you on your bottom and you stretch out your legs you can see if one of the heels is further away or not so th- this is what you the the physical effect that you see from this healing but the the main effect actually is that the finer bodies they get swept cleaned and therefore you you come again to your full um like soul soul path if you want to because we deviate in life we get distracted by things and all that and then we uh we have the opportunity to like to go exactly for for what we are here for um mm-hmm. yeah so if anybody's interested in that you can you can find me <laughs> yeah so do you do do you do those you do those online or do you, how do you do the how, how I, do you... I do that I can do that in person I can do that from a distance so distance is not a time and space uh, that does not matter it it and it works immediately so you can immediately see the result it's not like um this was your leg and then after two weeks is going to be straight so your hips is going to be straight immediately so um this is a gift that that I share with people and I also wrote a book about it. Um, so anybody can learn how how to do it. Yes, yeah, that sounds really cool. I've I've never heard of that before. And yeah, the, it's, that online is amazing. Yeah, actually, all these these healing uh, things that are mm, energetic or or actually conscious, like spirit spiritual healings, they don't they don't need. Uh, physical touch <laughs> they, they work outside of time and space it goes directly to to the soul that that needs it yes Somehow intelligent um yeah 
Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the kind of the, the, the energetic healing, you know, from a distance, mm. because, again, I've had direct experience of that mm. in lucid dreams with these great beings, uh, just extraordinary experiences I've had. Um, but I haven't heard of that, um, you know, the kind of the work with aligning the spine and getting the feet um, the same length. So it's really fascinating. So people can just reach out to you. Um, they can definitely via... reach out. Uh, they can ask me all the questions uh, they need. And if they need this 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 type of healing in their life, then I'm, I'm happy to to provide it. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you I'm have... Yeah, we'll go. Yeah. More, we'll be talking more about that on on my channel uh, soon, <laughs> and um, I hope this will give some more clarification. And I also have a German channel under the same name, Dan Lexo. There, there, are people can find videos with with the results before and after, like one shot one shot videos. Um, it's in German, but um, it's still it's still visible. So if anybody's interested to 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 see what's going on there. So, so you know, I'm kind of interested. How did this? How did the clarity of seeing this gift or recognizing this gift? How did that kind of unfold for you? In meditation. <laughs> okay. In meditation, I found out, and then because I wanted to make sure, I I was looking for other healers, and I visited them uh, to confirm, and I I learned like different ways to do it, but the result is. Uh, like always the same and so from all these different ways and from my own intuition i mm, i combined them to to make it really powerful like very very unique because you can do it with mantras or with a prayer or some type of ritual um but uh there you know there's a specific way <laughs> one can follow that is that is easy for for anybody to do and to have an immediate result. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing as well with this work, because it's um, specific to the spine, you know, with the, the Kundalini Shakti that when it awakens, it moves up through the yeah. spine, through the energy centers. That must help people who either have had an awakening or who are looking for or trying to sort of create an awakening. Has it, that proven to be true? It can, it can definitely help because it takes away the blockages and um I, it's not like i'm going to awaken your kundalini no it, it's this this is, <laughs> this is your job right yeah. but um i'm going to put the stones away that are like blocking you so so you can really go for it and some people they have like profound differences in in their life after um after the spinal alignment and some less. It depends on mm, on what you need, on what you really need, or, or how your way is going to be. But what happens for everybody is the spinal alignment. That that is for sure. That will happen for anybody, uh, for everybody. And then um, other changes like emotional changes, etc., traumas from the past that that can also be cleared. It's no promise, but it might happen. Um, they can move away so that your your way, your path is free. Yes. Yes, because certainly, let's say that your blockages are in the, the you know, the third chakra, mm. which links to community and, you know, having the courage to stand in your truth and all of those things. That would have a huge impact if there was a blockage there. And the mm. same is true with the throat chakra, right? You know, if there's a blockage there and there's fear of expression, then if that's cleared, then it would make uh, a massive difference with respect to how you can present and share in the world. So this is really, this is great to know, actually. I hadn't realized. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, um, I'm happy sharing it because I'm, I'm, I'm doing, it's the first time I'm doing it in, in English. Um, so the, the, all the English speaking world doesn't know about it too much. Like, like you didn't know, it's, it's, it's kind of known here in Germany and a little bit in Europe, but actually not in other places, not so much. So I, I see myself as part of my mission is to bring that to to the people, and I don't want it's not it's not that I'm keeping it for myself. I can do it, you know. If you ask me, can you do it, please for me, then then I will do it. Um, but I want I want that people realize that they have this power, so so they can do it and they can help others. And by by doing something, it 
it looks really big and it, it is actually it is a wonder actually what's happening there because it's from from now to now there's a difference and your skeleton moves i mean without without touching anybody but um um when, when you're doing it yourself after a while you keep doing it and you start to understand the mechanics behind it and the mechanics is consciousness <laughs> is yes. doing that it's not it's not me who's doing it right i'm i have an intention what i want to do and there's this particular line of thought i i follow but it's done not not by by me it's done by what whatever is doing it by god by its source yes and this this is the difference between for me at least because i was studying these things a lot between energetic healings and these type of spiritual healings i call them because energetic healings they can take time you put your hands or you send energy and they go 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 and this type of spiritual healings they can be immediate there is no there is no need for for time and for but energy is still there because energy is always connected with consciousness consciousness in motion actually energy is consciousness in motion like the name of my channel so yeah yes yeah that's remarkable and actually what you're saying um brings to mind something that happened to me some many years ago but it was um i think it was about seven or eight years after i had the the shakti part you know kundalini awakening um, I had been involved with some spiritual groups that were doing channeling and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, um, and and at a certain point, it just didn't feel right anymore. I knew I just wanted to stay with the yogic path and repeat the mantras and, <clears throat> you know, do yoga and all, all of that sort of work, the energy work around that. But um, I, I went through a period where I wasn't feeling well and um, I'd have stomach problems and then that would come and go and then I'd have, I'd feel like I was going to get the flu or something and, you know, that would come and go. And I felt like I was always battling some kind of minor ailment. And um, one afternoon, I, I was, re again, not feeling so well. Mm -hmm. And so I you know, left, told my boss at work, I said, you know, I'm not feeling well, I need to go home and rest. And so I did. And I lay down on my back and I was laying like this. And I uh, had been in the, in the habit of closing my eyes and repeating the mantra that I'd been given, which is Om Namah Shivaya. Om is the primordial sound. Namah means I bow to. And Shivaya is supreme consciousness or Shiva, you know. And so you're essentially saying, I bow to the light, or I bow to the Lord, I bow to consciousness, consciousness within my own being. And so um, I started to do that. And then what happened was I went into this state where I was kind of hovering just outside of my body. And this great Siddha, who I was familiar with because of Bhagavan Nityananda, she came into the room and she stood by the, by my by the bed by my, my my body and then she started to draw an egg shape on the blinds and she said there are cracks in the subtle body so she drew this egg which was kind of denoting the subtle body and she said there are cracks in the subtle body and mm -hmm. she went one two three to show me where the cracks were and then she laid she sat down next to me and was moving her hand across just a, a, maybe six to eight inches above the body and just doing this. And I knew she was healing the cracks. And so when I came back to waking, I felt absolutely incredible. My energy was just, it felt like yeah. massive, you know? And from literally from that moment on, all those minor ailments, feeling sick, not having much energy and all of that, it just completely dissipated. And then of course I did some research around, you know, what that, you know, cracks in the subtle body and all of that meant. And because it's, it leaks your vitality and energy. Mm -hmm. And it also makes you prone to attachments and, you know, whatever else, else you want to call these. I don't want to say dark forces, but it could be. Um, mm -hmm. And and kind of being weighed down by by things you don't want attaching to you. So that was an incredibly powerful lesson and also um, a clear experience and indicator that these great beings can literally 
heal conditions in seconds. It doesn't take a long time. So, yeah. Yes. Your stories are always so wonderful. I get goosebumps a lot of times, you know, during <laughs> uh, during your <laughs> stories. Oh man, yeah, it's true. A lot of a lot of things are possible. Um, I often have the feeling I'm scratching the the surface, you know, <laughs> like a little baby in the beginning. But um, sometimes really big things happen, and so it's by the grace of 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 God and the and the gurus, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, and also, you know, on the same note, I I had dreams where I would wake. You know, I'd wake up, I'd say I'd, the way I put it is I wake up in an ordinary dream. In other words, I realize this is a dream and I'm dreaming. And then usually the, where I am shifts to some other place, which is incredible usually. You know, it's expansive. I'm in the, another plane of existence. And mm -hmm. one time I was, it felt like I was standing on this blue star or something and I was repeating the mantra and it took me into... It was like a cave in the side of a hill or something. It felt like it was in India. And when I came into the cave, there were three master yogis. And one of them lay me down on the ground. And then the others pulled my head. So I was laying on the ground. And then the others pulled my head back like this, started pressing on my chest. And I started kind of vomiting this green bile. And it mm. went on for a long time. And... um And I realized what they were doing was they were doing this uh, kind of initiation of purification and they were they were releasing all of this old sort of stuff that um, from lifetimes, I guess, that needed to be released. And again, when I came out of that dream, I started to feel so much better. And, you know, I'd always had kind of stomach issues and problems since I was a kid. And after yeah. that, All of that completely disappeared and um, my digestive system was absolutely fine and and there were no problems. And I've heard that I've heard similar stories, particularly with respect to Kriyas, you know, these movements that happen within the body after awakening and that also link to um, the Siddhis kind of becoming more kind of manifest full blown so it's really uh it's just an incredible process the way it works and it it happens on its own of its own accord whenever it is ready to happen no exactly you um <clears throat> my experience is we have to aim for the highest right for directly for god and on the way these things will come up by themselves or they won't some some <laughs> people even they they don't have they have absolutely nothing and uh it doesn't matter Uh, because it's more important to be kind and good, actually, and to yeah. serve um, and to help. It's it's so simple. I always I feel like I'm repeating myself always when I speak about these things, but these are the more important things. And then if there are any abilities there, then, well, keep them to yourself, use them if needed, but uh, not like, okay, now I have this, I'm going to, ah! <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Or, or yeah. yeah, or putting a shingle out and trying to monetize it. You know, it's um, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. So you know, when I get kind of an intuition to say something to someone, mm -hmm. then I'll always check. You know, is this the right time? Is this person able to hear what you know I'm being prompted to say? And And I will only share if, if it feels like the right time and the right place and it's the right circumstances. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not very helpful. Yeah. yeah and it can, a... it can be detrimental, actually, I think, in some ways, too, if, if you don't monitor that, you know. Yes. Yes, I see what, you, what you're saying. Yes. Well, we have to be mindful, I guess, and be responsible with it. That's the whole sense of our <laughs> of our conversation today and on honoring um honoring that. Yes. yes. You know, the other thing is is that what, what I do want to bring up is that, you know, even though we're speaking about the Siddhis that are detailed in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, mm -hmm. these Siddhis or supernatural powers are spoken about in pretty much every single path, faith, and tradition. Uh, you know, they're, they're described differently. <laughs> I mean, in the Christian tradition they're spoken about in terms of the gifts of the spirit 
and um you know in other traditions they have different forms but it's essentially the same thing because it's the extraordinary powers of the soul that you know awaken and of consciousness itself that are kind of come to the fore mm. once once there's a recognition that you know i'm not just the mind the body and the story this i am that in which the mind the body and the story expresses itself exactly i've actually i've stayed a very long time i've stayed away from um from them <laughs> even even if if i noticed something i just let it i just let it pass but um now and this this conversation is also i guess part of it we we all are on some on some path now it's com it's coming more to the foreground that i'm not i'm not staying away anymore i'm not saying oh this is bad and don't use it no no it's okay to use it it's just to use it responsibly and for the good and for your development and not just because it is like it, it is a gift you you can use it it's okay but you know for some people and in my case it, it took me very a lot of years to to be okay with it to say okay well this is there and let's 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 see now how <laughs> what comes out of it let's see yeah. how, how it works yeah. Well, you know, in my in, in terms of my story, mm. um, these 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 gifts, these expressions of the of the Shakti were, uh, you know, there when I was a child, really, really young. Yeah, I, I, was, I was aware of them, right? Mm. But what happened was, I realized at a certain point that it it that wasn't the case for other people. So then I started to feel really weird. And then I worried about what should I say, what shouldn't I say, and I didn't kind of know how to handle that. So I, I, I had a clear memory of when I was around 14, looking mm. up at the sky and saying to God, this is too much, it's too much responsibility, please take everything away. And so then everything closed down. Mm. And um, it then started to open up and, and manifest after after Shakti Pat when I was in my early 30s and um but then they it came, everything came out kind of more full-blown so to speak and um yeah I you know I had to be very careful about who I told these experiences to because of course you can't go around telling everybody what's happening they'll they'll lock you up or think you're crazy or whatever the story exactly, exactly. <laughs> a lot of people might think you are crazy when you're having experiences or things around you happen by the grace of <laughs> of god and gurus somehow and it's sometimes it's incredible to it just it's unbelievable somehow and then on the other hand it is but what you said this is what i was talking about in the beginning that some people in the when they're young they close themselves off they cut yes. themselves because they feel weird they feel strange it's not normal you realize okay it's it's just me <laughs> and others others don't uh like perceive this or that and um but grace uh thankfully well, you were um like activated again activated yes yeah, yeah and it's it's interesting that actually before since you were speaking about how you heal the spine, you know, you can help heal, heal that kind of misalignment. But pr just prior to receiving Shaktipat in a lucid dream, I was having really terrible back problems. I was on bed rest for about, I don't know, two months or more. I had uh, two bulging discs um, and that it took mm. a long time for the doctors and so on to figure out what was going on. But I had two bulging discs But intuitively, I knew that the back condition related to closing the gifts down when I was 14. So I, I became very aware of that, which is why um, I started praying to God, even though I didn't know whether I believed in God at the time. But I thought, you know, let me just pray to God and uh, see what happens. And, and then that started this whole kind of movement. <laughs> Yeah, that led, yeah. led, led to the dream so it's often it, it is often that people do have back conditions that um you know are pointing them towards some sort of shift of consciousness 
True, because it's our antenna, actually. That's the main the main channel from the brain <laughs> that controls our, our whole body and everything is inside there. Like all the chakras are inside the spine. Mm -hmm. um, at least their, their um, seed. And then they can spread out to front and back. Um, I wanted to say something I forgot. Hmm. Uh, what was it? What was it? Relating to the spine. Yeah. What was something before that, actually? Oh. Well, it's gone. Maybe, maybe it will come back. Yeah, know. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, my I've had on and off issues with my spine, but the big, the big, big, big one was just before receiving um Shakti Pat. And then all of a sudden, it just soon after that, it just started to get so much better, and um, it kind of healed itself, so to speak. And I, I know it was all related, you know, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, the spine is uh, the place that we have to make sure is healthy and functioning well. And um, especially if we want to awaken and do this work, you know, it's really important. Yeah, that's why when they when they teach you, they always say, sit with a, a straight up spine. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> which, but yeah, which... important because the, the energy flow needs to needs to go up or down or whatever um, route it, it wants to take. Um, and it's easier when the spine is straight and the body is firm and relaxed. And when yeah. you have pain, well, then of course you cannot relax. Um, but I do remember what I wanted to say, and is uh, is and that is uh, you you started praying to God, and you even though you did not know if there is God or not. And I think this is a a big step for for us to 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 do that. I kind of did it my whole life, and I'm like you, I, I I was not sure if there is, but at some point I I kind of was sure there is God in whatever form, you know. But there is, uh, and um, yeah, I challenge I challenge people to just uh, to just uh, start and do it, and, and and do a prayer, a sincere prayer, because God will always hear you, no matter how loud or uh or quiet you are yes. um, and then just uh, see what happens and trust trust that that it is so like like the bible says <laughs> yes well you know the other thing i'm just having an epiphany while we're speaking actually and that is what i can see now is the hesitancy mm. and questioning you know, do I really believe wasn't so much that I didn't believe there was God, but I didn't believe the version of God that had been presented to me through my Catholic upbringing, because I could perceive and see and feel that the nuns who were teaching me and some of the priests that were, you know, giving the sermons and so on were, they, there was a, I could see there was like a lack of complete faith somehow. And the experiences they were speaking about or speaking from the Bible about didn't match the direct experiences I was having with angelic beings and actually with Jesus himself in lucid dreams and so on and so forth. So that's the part that I really struggled with because, because what I was hearing from them was all often more about hell and damnation than about the joy, the beauty and the love of Christ and the joy, the love, and the beauty of these angelic beings that would come and visit. And it was that that I'd always always had difficulty with. Mm. Um, and so that was, I think, where the hesitation came from. But, but now, you know, I realized that um, praying mm. was the best thing I could have done. And also what happened was uh, my grandmother, who had died, I think, oh, I don't know, in the 70s or something like that, she started, and she was a very devout Catholic, she started coming to me in lucid dreams and telling me, pray, you must pray, you must pray. Mm. And, um, I, and that really encouraged me. Yes, prayer is wonderful and it's beautiful and everybody should do it. It's part of every culture and religion and it's it's universal for, for every being, actually, not only for humans. 
I yeah. think animals pray too. And um, yeah, the, the Bible, the, the God of the Bible is a, depicted as a cruel one. He's somebody who will punish you and no, you yourself punish yourself when you do certain things you choose to. But um, it's it's more like you described it with uh, Jesus and, and the angels. It's more this type of feeling of love and grace and peace and and all that. Like a big warm hug. Then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then somebody was going, oh, you were a bad boy. You're going to, you're going to hell now. Yes. Um, Yes, which is certainly the steady diet that I was given when I was at school mm -hmm. um, back, you know, way back when. But I'm sure it's different, or I hope it's different now in Catholic schools. But, um, who, you know, who knows? Who knows? Well, it's, we can, it's, it's very simple for, for people if they're listening to. Whenever there's fear, it's not that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So whenever somebody's telling you, oh, you know, don't do that, or this and that, that religion is telling you, when you do this, then you're going to be punished for that, or you're going to rot in hell, or whatever. Whenever there is inducing of fear, I would I would stay away and just go where it's where it's pleasant and where it feels good. It's it's very easy to follow the so-called heart, right? Where it feels pleasant, where it's yeah. where it's Yes, it's all about the heart. As Bhagavan Nichinanda used to say, the heart is the hub of all sacred places. Go there and roam. Um, yes, it becomes more and more, yes, a reality. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just realizing, Dan, I'm looking at the time and we're, you know, at the, kind of at the end of our time together today. But before we go, would you just like to remind people where they can find you? Sure. Um, yes. You can find me on my YouTube channel, which is called Consciousness in Motion, Dan Lexo. And um, I will send Julie a link to my book if anybody's interested. You can send me an email to mail at danlexo.com. Um, and I also have an Instagram, but Julie has it. I think she will, she will link it in the, in the description. And yeah, feel free to contact me. I'd be, I'd be happy to, to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. This has been really wonderful. It's been a great conversation about the Siddhis, the supernatural powers. And um, okay. I'm sure yeah. people, viewers, will enjoy this episode. So thank you. I hope so. Be blessed, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. If you value the content, then please let people know. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. That would be absolutely great. So until next time, take it easy, be well, and bye for now. Bye.